I was a physics major in in college, and the war was really dependent upon physics. But this was really the beginning of the medical use of isotopes. And I had the good fortune to join the VA and meet with Dr. Solomon Burson, who was an internist. And we got along very well. We didn't have a separate office. We had desks next to each other. And I learned enough medicine from him to work actively in the medical application of isotopes. She taught me to be ruthlessly honest. She taught me to be ruthlessly analytical. Things were different in those days. I was married before I completed my degree. I had a husband, wasn't interested in sexual involvement with the men in the field. Saul Burson and I started to work together at the VA in 1950. Three years later, we described what was later to be the Nobel Prize. And what I learned from her is it's not how big your grant is, it's what you produce. It's whether you make a difference or not. Had you any idea um, in 1958 that your research would impact on so many thousands of lives? I'm not sure 58. If you want to say mm -hmm. within 10 years after we mm -hmm. developed radioimmunoassay, the answer is yes. She ran the core lab for the VA system. Now, in a sense, physics is a quantitative science. So you may say that even when I worked in medical use of isotopes, I was concerned with the quantitative science. And there was nothing like watching Ross start to analyze the data. It was like a gourmet settling down in a fine meal. You would give her the data, and she would take the data, and she would chew it over and look at it. And she would sit there and with an incredibly analytical brain, she would literally look at the numbers and in her mind's eye draw the standard curve. People now are very concerned about radiation. How do you answer some of these concerns? Come to a hospital, you have x-rays all the time. You generally get more radiation exposure from your x-rays than you do from isotopes. That's supposed to be the phone call telling me about the Nobel. How did it feel when you found out that you had actually won the Nobel Prize? Take a look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's nothing like it. It's the most important prize you can get. The big tragedy was that Saul had died so we didn't share it. What did you do with the money? Money was very little in those days. Nowadays, you talk about a million dollars. Then it was 75000 You don't get rich on 75000 Had you seen yourself as a role model to women before? The answer to that is yes and no. One might say when I got my bachelor's from Hunter, which was an all-girls school, getting a degree in physics and going into graduate school in physics, I was the first woman as a PhD student in physics in the University of Illinois. So you might say, all oh, along, there are these different steps. This was where you belonged. This is where I belonged. And when trouble happens, I remember what Ross taught me to do. I can remember sitting in the lab at 3 o'clock in the morning, and the results didn't make sense. And when I went back to the notebook, I found the technician had entered the wrong column in the computer. 
and if it wasn't for the way Roz had taught me to go over things and keep my notebooks, I would never have been able to pick it up. Do you have any advice for students? My advice is to take courses in many fields and see which you like best. Pleasure is part of it, so that you sort of enjoy what you're doing. You enjoy reading about what other people are doing. What's the best time of day for you to do your thinking? When I was working before, it was when I spoke to Saul or the research fellows. And it could be in the middle of the night or the day. There was, it was a contact with the right people that met. When I walked in the lab, she said, you go to the meetings to see what everyone's working on, to stay away from it. And that typifies the way she taught us to do science, people who went through her lab that you don't do Me Too science. You go and do original work. Be interested in learning. Learning in college, learning by reading books, learning by living in a community. I went to school in the Bronx. I taught in the Bronx. I worked always at the Bronx Veterans Administration Hospital. I tease about being the Bronx housewife who made good.